Oh, so that would be a noodle right here, right? <laughs> <laughs> what else? Long stretch. Slow stretch, long stretch. Trunk rotation. Rota good, good. Broken septic can be either. Um, and, and heavy weight bearing is more inhibitory as opposed to light joint compression is more facilitatory. So we would do the heavy weight bearing. I did this for you. <clears throat> I would bookmark this. Just all kinds of stuff on here. <coughs> Why reinvent the whale? Okay. Let's talk about this one. Here's exercises that you can give them by the way while I'm thinking about it. Um, everybody's soap notes, I'm still working on those. I'll have them done by the end of the day today. But consistently what I'm seeing is, um, one, we're not detailed enough. Two, 
um, when you reference a home exercise program, put a copy of it in the chart with it. Okay, so that's a CYA for you and your client because they will go, well, you told me to do that. No, I didn't. Here's what I gave you. Uh, okay, so always put a copy at it. I know we didn't do it this time. Okay, but if you give them something to do, write down what it was, give pictures, make copies of the stuff in there, use the stuff, I don't care, but put a copy of it in the chart is exactly what you gave them to do, okay? We'll be practicing this at some point. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is the hardest thing in the world to do. I am not lying. It is, it's hard. Really what you try to do, the easiest way to do it is go ahead and put it together like a, and put it on like a pullover, like a sports bra. But then again, you have problems with gravity. Sounds <laughs> fun. <laughs> Karen may make y'all try that. So just, uh, yeah, just, just, uh, <laughs> so anyway, this is, this seriously is probably one of the hardest tasks to do one handed. I'm willing to help. <laughs> totally joking. <laughs> Anyway, this is a lovely website. I would I would certainly <coughs> bookmark if I were you. Because again, why why reinvent the wheel? Oh oh oh. Julie, if you would, if you take a piece of paper out and pass it around, if it, those of you who would be interested in purchasing the OTA toolkit or the OT toolkit, please let me know by signing this piece of paper, and then I'll see what kind of deal we can get cut. Can you tell us what is it? It's the book. It, it was that big book. That was in, that's in, I think it also oh, has a Facebook page. Yeah. It, it probably does. Is it for peds too? Well, not directly, but you could certainly use a lot of the stuff. You can adapt it. Price? Okay. Yeah. Are we looking at like a hundred dollars? Like eighty. <coughs> Which, Close enough. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. In some cases, that is, yeah. So. Well, but I might be getting it. See, I cut her down. So the more people that order it, the better leverage you have in bargaining. Yes. For me. Yes. Well, Mother's Day's coming up, so. <laughs> Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? I mean, I do the same thing. I'm like, I'd like to back and clean Oh, sister, I usually don't ask for anything, but this year I'm like, you're getting me a textbook. And you're <laughs> you're getting. <laughs> That's how that went this year. Okay, well, so far we've got 100% pass rate. For what? Uh, the people that just took the board. No pressure. This is a new one, right? Good. Um, 12. Anybody who has it? Yeah, there's there's 10 more that have not. Do people tend to do better if they take it right after they graduate or if they study first? That's what I would say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait. More than a couple months. I need a job. Study. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. I, I, I'm, I'm, and I was gonna watch they finished in November. <laughs> Paperwork and stuff then was December. Before they, most of them were eligible. There was three or four that took it in November. And then. Wait, what's the thing about being? Yes, you can see it. Yeah, there's a hundred. Yes, there's. But she's still got. Copies. What what we all forgot is March of 2017 is the research for national and the relicensing. So we are, they are getting caught in that all this influx of paperwork from other people as well. So things are moving a little slower than they would like. How are you gonna do for like two states? The certification, the certification is one test, but state licensure, there's going to be separate requirements for state licensure. 
South Carolina is the easiest because they require you to take the test. North Carolina asks that you take the test, but they also ask for some other stuff. But I don't think you can start work. It, it depends. I mean, we'll have more of a discussion about that later, but you can certainly ask for it to be sent to two states, and then you'll just have to get licensure in both states. Or so, yeah, wherever you want to go. Yeah. No, I'm, you, you are saying that you are interested, and then I can go, oh, look, I have this many people interested. What kind of deal can I get? <laughs> okay, so what kind of treatment techniques? Well, we're going to start with range of motion. We may start with passive. We may do active assistive. We may do active. Depends on what is left after the, the insult. We need to be careful of... So this, at all times, is important. Mm -hmm. Even laying in bed. Mm -hmm. Because actually just laying in bed without a pillow behind your scapula can cause posterior subluxation. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Follow that? Mm -hmm. So I need to make sure there's a pillow back there. Okay? Kinesio taping. This is fun. Yeah. This is not an entry level skill. Um, and I don't, I, I know bad enough to be dangerous with it. Um, but it's a really cool thing that you can take some continuing ed on and it works very nicely. Doing um, motor retraining. Um, there is constraint induced movement therapy. Did y'all talk about that? Yes. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Works very well. Um, in a country across the, the sea, <coughs> they, they um, worked on things like postural control by removing the arm of the wheelchair that they were leaning toward. <laughs> and you know what else? <laughs> it worked. They worked. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that same, you know, you put them in a chair that has no arm over here. <laughs> One of two things is going to happen. <laughs> and, and, and that's exactly what they found out. Not, will not work here in the good old United is it because it, it kicks in the formation of the stabilizer muscles and stuff like that that kind of, you know, oh, 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 oh. It, might, it might remove some learned helplessness there, too. Yeah. I'll just rest my arm. Nope. We can't do that here in the state. I don't know if you ever worked more than just one day. <laughs> tone again. We got that facilitator and inhibitor stuff. We need to work on bilateral integration because we also learn how to do things with one hand and even when I start getting motion back in this one, you can do it faster. Mm -hmm. I go, well, that's fine. We can go back to the bar. Okay? Just, we're still going to work toward integrating both those hands back into, into um, use, right? Again, think. What, what level is bilateral integration kind of start? Four months, yeah. Right. Developmental level. Bring it to midline is what? Four months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Strength and endurance. Strength is what? Pull against gravity. Strength is, if you will, it's a snapshot. Okay? Endurance is your video. It is strength over time. Those are two separate issues. Many, many times you will work with someone who has plenty of strength, but zero endurance. So strength-wise, you may go, they should be independent in ADLs, mm -hmm. but endurance-wise, they can't do it because they may wash their face and be exhausted, and that's it. That's all we got. Okay, so strength and endurance, two separate things. Why is swelling going to be a problem in the affected side? Inflammation. Yeah, it's not even that. 
If I am flaccid and I don't have muscle motion, muscle is actually the flexion, the, the contractions of our muscles are what move fluid. Okay? So if they're not moving and my arm is hanging in a dependent position. Yes, it will. I mean, who, who walks in the summertime? And who takes their jewelry off before they go walking in the summertime? Because you get back to the house and you're like, mm, mm, mm. right? They turn into little sausages, okay? <laughs> so, this, but this is worse, all right? There's no motion there, it's going to swell up. So, elevation. I'm getting ahead of myself because we'll be talking about this a little bit later. But the best thing to decrease swelling is active motion. Okay? Elevation above the heart does what? Towards the heart. Okay? Retrograde massage means. Distal to proximal? Distal to proximal. Because if I have a swollen hand and I want to move the fluid out, which way am I wanting to move it? Because if I start moving it this way, you're increasing. All I'm going to get is fat fingers. Right? Okay? So, retrograde means back toward the heart. Okay? We can do wrapping, we can wear stockings, we'll talk all about that stuff. <laughs> and while we are retraining, relearning, redoing, I'm also going to give you stuff to compensate. I may end up taking it away from you. Okay? For example, I may go, we're going to just wear pullover shirts for right now. Okay? But you can put on a pullover shirt by yourself, and that's what I want you to do. Okay? So that's where we're going to go. Does that mean I'm not going to work on doing buttons? No. I'm going to continue to work on buttons. I'm going to continue to work. Y'all putting on a button-up shirt? You talk about perceptual problems? Somebody with perception? I've had patients that I'm like, I don't even know how you did that. I'm sitting there watching them and I have no idea how they got their shirt on upside down, inside out, and backward. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but running your arm through, reaching around, pulling it through, and putting your arm, that's a big deal. Okay. I'm going to start them off maybe just doing pullovers. We're just going to wear t shirts. Up. Easy peasy. Okay? I'm going to continue. I may start doing button up shirts the same way. I may button them up halfway mm -hmm. and have them work on putting it on like a pullover. Okay? Then I may continue and go, okay, we're not going to get, a, we're not getting a whole lot of motion back yet, so let's try to work on one handed buttoning. We've got to work on lining it up correctly. Okay? We've got to work on being able to do it without looking. Because sometimes I can do things right here just fine, mm -hmm. and then I put it here, and it's like I can't see what I'm doing. And okay, so there's various levels in between. But I am going to do stuff to keep you functional now. Okay, so it's kind of a twofold thing. You, you will see with our hips and knees, we'll give you equipment, but we'll take it away. Okay? Some things we can't fix, but I can teach you how to go around. That's perfectly done. <coughs> okay. Those with visual field cuts, I think we talk about that in here. Um, if you know you have a visual field cut, I can teach you how to go around it. If you don't know it, that's a perceptual whole nother problem. Right? Speaking of, you may have diplopia, which means double vision. Easy peasy fix. Four by four. Does that mean they're going to wear a four by four all the time? Good. 
but I may start them off with that, particularly if I'm starting to get them up and they're real dizzy when they sit up and it makes them nauseated. Guess what, we're gonna pack that out while you're sitting up, while we're doing that. Give me an oxy on means what? field okay like this <coughs> so this is shared right mm -hmm. okay. if give me an oxia means this okay this and you're eating breakfast with them and they, they've eaten their, their tray and they're telling you they're still hungry. And then they hit the other side. Yeah, and you're like, and, and the right side of the tray is like licked clean, okay? Juice is gone, coffee's gone, right side of the plate, everything is gone. And you're like, well, you, you still got a, you still got a biscuit over there. Where? <laughs> okay, turn your head to the, to the left. Keep turning, keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. And they will almost have to come all the way over here before they see it. There it is. Okay. Yes. Isn't that kind of what Beth said she has? The lady that did this podcast? Yes, but she just has a quadrant. It's not the whole side. It's just the lower, right lower quadrant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if you are aware that you have a field cut, I can teach you to compensate for that. Because what I may do, easy peasy, is take a red piece of three inch tape, put it on the side, um, the left side of your tray, and say keep looking until you find that red piece of tape. Keep looking until you find the red piece of tape. Okay? Trying to teach them to turn, that they're going to have to turn to get their whole visual field, they're going to have to turn their head and do it. If they are unaware of their field cut, perceptually, you have a challenge. Okay? Does that sound like, oh no, I can see everything? What does that sound like when they're... Do you remember the cars that you had when you were little that you could wind up and they'd run into the wall? Mm -hmm. And they'd back up and they'd run into the wall. Yeah. And they'd back up and run into the wall. <laughs> you get it? That's what's going to happen. Because they're going to be in their wheelchair. And you'll say, you can, you can head on back to your room, and they'll be going on just, mm -hmm. they have no idea, okay? The arm will be hanging off the side. It's gonna be caught in the spokes of the chair. Always fun. Okay, well, we're going back to perception, sensory perception here. You know, they don't know it's there. If, if they can, they can interest you, if there's sensory problems along with I'm giving an amen over here. There's, if there's sensory problems along with the perceptual problems, one of the things you're going to have to teach them is to make sure you look for that hand and put it in your lap because you will leave it hanging out. It'll get caught in the chair. It'll get caught when you do transfers, and it looks like heck by the time you get to it. And they, they will not, I mean, it's gushing blood and skin's ripped off. And, and then I feel it. 
Sometimes not, no. Perceptual. You know, sensory and perceptual problems. Okay? This, this, we're gonna, we're gonna do some visual neglect stuff. I'm gonna show y'all some more of this so you can kind of, cause it's so hard to understand, okay? You have lived 70 years with two arms and two legs. You wake up and suddenly you are only aware of one arm and one leg. What about this one over here? Which one? Yep. Am I speaking truth on this? It is, it is mind boggling. Mirrors a great idea. Mirrors are good, but if, sometimes not. Yeah. Like in their mind, when you visualize a person walking, will they be able to visualize a person with two arms and two legs? Not necessarily. Is that what you're asking our body? Not, not yeah. necessarily. Okay. They will shave one half of their face. Mm -hmm. So if you ask them to draw themselves. Yeah, you get a half a person. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. This video will give you all a lot more because this is hard to, wow. to so hold they, on to. So can they not have a stroke and still have this problem? Sure. Like internal, so that's kind of Any neuro. Like Any neuro thing. Any neuro. Uh -huh. No, when you're saying like the shaving, wouldn't they be looking in a mirror? Sometimes. And still sometimes. Maybe it's an electric razor. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I use an electric razor. Yeah, I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fun to try to explain this. We had a guy that, and I don't know if this is the same thing, like he was always crooked in the bed and would swear that he was straight. Is that the same type of yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay. So and he's like, I am straight in the bed. No, you're not. You're because not. again, put, put this neglect stuff with hemianopsia. Okay, I can look into a mirror and I'm not going to see stuff over here. Oh, that sounds fun. But he, yeah. he knew that he had that side because he knew he had a bad side good but he just couldn't so his his midline was off more than so that's what it is yeah this. yeah okay more than the neglect i mean if he knew it then we can we can do something about it, it these are the was it the guy that sits like this are you sitting up straight Sometimes the mirror can help. It depends on their perceptual, it, it, it really depends on how bad their perception is. They'll, they'll also sit like this. You got Ken in the middle? Yeah. Okay, so all this, all this stuff that we've been talking about, it, it can be affected. And again, it's on a continuum of where it is and how bad it is. Okay. What does accommodation mean? There's ways to get around it. Well, visually. Well, accommodation <coughs> is like point. changing the input, like the focus of your eyes based on that perception. Is that what the lens does? Or like Making the them point, one yeah. picture. Someone thinks there's accommodation in your eyes. Or is it the... I'm not sure which one it is. I don't know. Did I move? No, that's different. This one is like, okay, everybody put your finger in the corner. Okay, look at the corner, and then look at your finger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, your, your vision changes. Changing, yeah. That's accommodating. Huh. So it's like, changing. it's what you're using to take words off here and put it down on there. Focus changes. Yeah. Focus. yeah. Don't usually see auditory deficits unless they were pre-morbid. 
You don't usually see olfactory or gustatory unless it was premorbid. Again, massive um, sensory input problems. <coughs> so if I have a sensory issue and I can't feel as well, then again, I, my arm can fall off the chair and get caught in the wheelchair. That's like worst case scenario. Um, don't feel the, the pain, don't feel pressure, again, leading toward bed sores. Mm -hmm. uh, temperature, cooking, cooking. Uh, checking your uh, water for your shower. You got somebody do that? Either, either, either it's um, really, really hot when it ain't, or it's really, really cold when it's. Yeah, and they just jump right in. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Proprioception, vibration, all that can change. Oh, when you're doing <coughs> oral motor stuff, the way you can check sensory stuff a lot of times is to see their swallowing motion and their tongue motion. Because, go back again, if they're hemi, okay, and they have sensory loss on the cheek and they have sensory loss on the tongue, you won't get people squirreling and having no idea. Do you feel something over here? No. Well, they're not going to go after it if they don't feel it. So that's where you get to go in and pull it out for them. So yeah, watch, watch. That's going to give you a lot more information than, than actually testing. <coughs> Visual perceptual. Visual attention. Am I having difficulty with that right now? It's hot, <coughs> there's a lot of info, and the attention can be one you. But now let's think again. If I've got someone who has difficulty with visual attention, and they have a field cut, me doing things like keep looking to the left, keep looking to the left, keep looking, look for the red tape, look for the red tape. What'd you say look for? Have you found the red tape? Red tape. Red. Okay. <coughs> Visual search and scanning. <coughs> we'll be doing some of that. So you can see what we're talking about there. How many of us scan instead of read? What if you couldn't? Let's go back to our jump drawer. Visual search is going to suddenly become a way bigger problem. Spatial stuff can be a problem. There's your figure gram we were just talking about. Midline orientation we've already talked about. Color stuff, again, that's usually pretty morbid. What does pre-morbid mean? Before the insult. Okay. What's the preposition? I know what the preposition is. It's like what? Over, what above, the beyond. Oh, just like spatial relationship. Dog in the doghouse thing. Between, under. Yeah. Okay. Before. There can be apraxia, which is. No motor planning. <laughs> That's right. No motor planning. Agnosia means we're all guilty of this occasionally. That does not mean you've had a stroke. What is okay. it called? You know the, you know that uh, oh, the, yeah, the <coughs> thingamajig, yeah. Or it could all, you can also see it when you. Who was it? Was it James? Was it you telling me about somebody that didn't know what the brush was for? It was an aerial in the little mermaid. 
no, no, this way. Yes, that's a good example. Um, but somebody was telling me about somebody was telling me about the therapist gave him a brush, gave the the client a brush, and she just busted out in tears because she had no idea what it was for. Aww. Body awareness, right, left to scrim, body relationships. We were talking about, y'all were asking earlier about body scheme. This is where this stuff kind of comes in. That unilateral neglect. Like I said, this left side may or may not. It, it happens on the right, but not nearly as frequently. <coughs> it's just not there. Cognitive stuff. What, what, what might we see here? Anybody do a shower with anybody where somebody had to, where the OT had to stand there and go, okay, wash your face. Yes. Okay, now move to your chest. Mm -hmm. A detail and sequencing of steps. This comes first, then this, then this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you've washed your chest. Good enough. Let's go on to the next one. Okay. Attention and concentration. We could all argue we have difficulty with that one. Disorientation and confusion. Right. We could argue we have that now. What does alert and orient times four mean? Okay, I'll take that. Situation. I was going to say environment, but that was context. In context. Yes. Memory deficits. More. Frequently than not, short-term memory will be affected with neuro stuff. Long-term memory generally remains intact. Or more intact, I should say. Yep. So is that Alzheimer's and stroke? Right. But well, we have somebody that seemed to have been developing Alzheimer's before the stroke. So is this going to it can make it much worse. It can make the dementia much worse. And, and along with that, if you look here, yeah. I'm going to have a really, really, really hard time learning anything new. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the short term from the stroke and you don't have the long term from the And it's <coughs> just as concrete as it can. No sarcasm. No yes. Yeah. And some of this stuff, you, you learn tricks. Um, my, my famous one that I used to do was, I would say, hey, Hannah, how you doing? Good. Good. Did you have a good night? Yeah. Yeah. Have you looked out the window today? Yeah. Did you see the snow? Yeah. Is this snow? Because what was I feeding her? So I was waiting to see, is she really hearing and understanding what I'm saying? Or is she just responding? Oh, yeah. she's, she's saying yes because you're nodding your head yes. Right. Oh. So what does that tell me <coughs> about calm? I'm not saying. <laughs> it's Monday, I'll cut you some slides. <laughs> Here's the sequence in an organization that you yeah. were talking about. I used to have. Anybody? Foresight cartoons. Yes. Yeah. 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 Love them. Have you seen the one where it says first socks, then shoes? It was a guy, it was supposedly a guy who was okay, but he was sitting on the side of the bed and there was this big sign on the wall across from him that said first socks, then shoes. <laughs>
Honestly, if something's going to stick in any type of neuro problem, it's going to be short-term memory that's going. Okay. You will see that. <coughs> we'll talk about that when we get to head injuries too. That short-term memory is just shot. <coughs> oh, uh, the short-term short memory, like one minute. Short-term memory technically is the same thing as working memory. Right. So it's anything you're doing right now. And so. If I said, so, Nina, what'd you have for breakfast? This, and, and, and we'll talk about that when we get to TBIs. I'll tell you some things you can do with that. Thought inflexibility, back to learning new stuff. Mm -hmm. I, said, I watch my stories at 1230. <laughs> <laughs> do not go to 1.30. I know why you're laughing. <laughs> I will not have my hair done at 1230. I will not. 1230 to 130. Don't mess with my stories. Everywhere. I'm going to be talking about that here some more in just a minute. You may see impulsivity. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, this is Ardeth all the way, even now. She really? She cannot remember her caregiver's names since the old one has left. Does she call by the old name sometimes? She does. Mm -hmm. And I have to give her cues. And one of them's name is CC, so she'll say, and she goes, CC. But that's good that she knows. She okay, knows I, can, I can ask Sue, and Sue can help me. Right. That's right. good. Yeah. And that is good, but, and then, um, but I'll ask her, I'll call her just to check on her when I'm not there with her on certain days and say, did you have breakfast? lunch can't remember so I'll swing by to check on her and I'll look in the trash can yeah. for any visual indication that she's eaten whatever and then if it's suspect I said we gotta eat some supper I'm so glad I stopped by because I'm hungry and then mm -hmm. you know get her to eat with me and she has experienced within the past two maybe three months bouts of malnutrition because she will not feed herself not that she's not able. Right. But, yeah, she's, this is her that. all the way. And then sometimes I'll just keep hammering. Before she had her TIAs, I would hammer, you don't open the front door to anybody without checking, looking through the peephole. Right. Never open the screen door, period. I always keep it locked. And even now, I'll go over that safety awareness. You know, the only men, the yard guy, my brothers, her pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just you safety. It's just, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> because. I, I'm serious. Have y'all seen that commercial that. about where the guy came to she hang a mirror in this old lady's house there. and he said he needed her social security number so he could. Order yeah, that was it. And I was like. But, and she did what? She gave it to him. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's a commercial. Oh. For Life lock. Yeah. It may have been. I don't know. Okay. Judgment. <coughs> Safety yeah. awareness. Generalization. Learning new stuff. We get tired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get tired. So hard. Yes. <coughs> we get tired. Okay. Now, you remember that Kimbo was talking about the guy who could only work for three hours on the lawnmower? Mm -hmm. He was accurate up until that point, and then he just. Okay. We do the same thing. Oh, yeah. Because your brain's tired. Okay? <coughs> now, behaviorally, what are we going to see? <coughs> we've talked about motor. We've talked about cognition. We've talked about sensory stuff. What about behavior stuff? Very impulsive. They can be very impulsive or they can perseverate. What does perseverate mean? They keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. And trying. Yes. Just repetitive motion. Which is what, what I said about the cars. You know, the cars that hit and then back up and they hit and then back up. Well, they'll do that with their chair. I, I'm not kidding. They will try to go through a door. They'll hit something. They'll back up. They'll go through the door again. They'll hit it again. They'll keep hitting it. With, with lack of insight and judgment, and if they're not aware of, of sensory and cognitive deficits and a visual field cut, 
they don't know to look to see what's keeping them from going. Yeah. Okay. Or <coughs> we're going to talk here in a minute, which group typically does this. Very impulsive. Doesn't think through it. These are people that you're constantly going, put your brakes on, put your brakes on. Don't stand up. Don't. Ah, don't. <laughs> Wait until I'm standing beside you before you stand up. Okay? Very impulsive. Don't, don't even think. Not all the time. <laughs> Emotional problems or problems not the right word. Issues. Okay. Liability means what? Yes. And, and this is not the therapist. This is your patient. You're talking to somebody and all of a sudden they bust into tears. I don't know why I'm crying. Uh, okay. That's okay. That's okay. Let's try to pull it together. Or maybe they do know why they're crying. Okay, well, let's talk about that. <coughs> Who's going to take care of me when I go home? Can I go home? Y'all think for a minute. Think, think, think. What is it we work our entire lives for? Yeah, student life. Which is usually what? Home. 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 I've worked my entire life for my home. <coughs> and that's really all I got. I mean, I got family. But as far as stuff, my house, with my stuff in it. Mm -hmm. But I can't go back. That's what happens to all my stuff, i.e. what happens to me, because I'm, I am That's my stuff, me. and yeah. my stuff is me. Yeah. From one and, become one in the same. <laughs> and you got it, you got it. Listen, when your patients come in, and they, they've moved into an assisted living, which the rooms are maybe a little bit bigger than my office, maybe. Are you telling me that 70 years of my life has to be contained within this, this small area? You know what? I can't even get dressed on myself. I can't even go to the bathroom by myself. They're entitled. Okay. Some of it will be organic, You'll see the liability because of organic, but you're going to see emotional stuff. I can't change something on. So, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> we're going to have to adapt to disability. What does that mean to roles? What do they want to be able to do? This is a biggie. Do you want, do you want to address this one or do you want me to do this? Anybody ever taken care of a family member? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Obnoxious. Okay. He was obnoxious. Well, some of us and some of us that are parents, okay, you kind of the little ones you go, they'll grow out of this. If I don't kill them beforehand, we can get them out of the house and it'll be all right, right? Okay, well now now you got mama or, or grandma or someone who ain't growing out of it. Never. 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 <clears throat> okay, and I'm not just. So, sometimes it's because of the process. Sometimes you go, yeah, I get it, but stop it. <laughs> you know, I'm not enjoying this either. So, you really need to address caregiver burnout. <clears throat> I was um, forever telling families, again, I was in the acute care part. So, I was telling people this is the best, most attention that they are going to have. Please go home and take a bath, take a nap, and eat something. They are going to need you much more a little bit later on, and you need to be there and be ready to fit that. Okay? <clears throat> and it's very, very difficult. You think guilt as a parent is bad. I think guilt as an adult caregiver is worse. I really do. Because they took care of you when you were your most vulnerable, and now they're their most vulnerable. But not only are they at their most vulnerable, 